Hey traders, Todd here. Welcome to the free video update. It's now Tuesday night, June 20th, and I hope you guys are doing well. We're gonna talk about, uh, again, I'm hearing a lot of people talk about don't believe this rally because it's only being led by a few large cap growth. I did a video about that uh, about two weeks ago. I'm still hearing it, so we have to address it again. We've got to kind of stop the, the bad information. In fact, you know what, let's not stop it because the more people that still don't believe the rally, the more people are gonna have to buy in later. Um, but that being said, you know, let's look at what's actually happening below the surface. And then at the end of the video, we'll, um, I'll jump into the NASDAQ, show you the uh, technical position. We are very long in this market. We are expecting a little bit of a pullback here though, as soon as there's a little bit of realization that uh, we are now in a new uptrend. So I'll show you where that pullback might uh, might uh, start to to show up here. So let's jump in and first of all, let's take a look at let's take a look at this. Um, again, a few large cap stocks are solely responsible for leading this market higher in 2023. Let's examine. So here's the S and P 500 on the left. Okay, and right here is year to date return. So we have. The worst stock, Advanced Auto Parts down 53%, Key Bank, Zions, a lot of banks in there. But then let's scroll up and look at the year-to-date return of the S&P 500, which I've labeled for you, which is right around 14.32%. There are, the S&P 500, 135 stocks outperforming the S&P 500 return. That doesn't really seem like a narrow rally to me. Here's all 135 of the 500 stocks that are outperforming the S&P this year. The big ones uh, are, of course, NVIDIA up 199%, Meta up 136, Tesla, Carnival Cruise 97%, Royal Caribbean, AMD, Pulte, Salesforce, GE, okay? Let's flip over to the NASDAQ, NASDAQ 100. There are 25 stocks out of the 100 stocks that are outperforming the QQQ or the NASDAQ 100 year-to-date return, which is 37.79%. One in four stocks in the NASDAQ are outperforming the NDX. That doesn't really seem like narrow breadth to me. Okay. So let's take a look at this. Um, here's a chart we're looking at equal weight S&P, RSP compared to cap weighted S&P, the SPX, as well as equal weight NASDAQ, which is QQEW, I believe, and the NASDAQ 100, okay? So we're looking back here, uh, at the end of 21, here's all of 22, and then into 23, and black up top is the equal weight S&P. Uh, now it's true compared to the August of 2022 highs that equal weight has not made a new high where the cap weight has. Here's another way of thinking about it, guys. Maybe, it's the cap weighted that's actually catching up to the equal weight. Let's take a look, okay? Look, the equal weight made a new high here in January, the last week, actually, this was February 2nd, February 3rd, Groundhog's Day. The equal weight S&P made a new high here where cap weighted down here in blue was nowhere near it. So maybe you could say another way, cap weighted was in fact lagging equal weight because we didn't confirm by making new highs relative to August of 22, where now cap-weighted S&P is doing a little bit of catch-up. So maybe finally cap-weighted is catching up. Different way to look at it. Looking at the NASDAQ, really not that much difference between equal weight and the NASDAQ 100, okay? We're, all, we're basing this off of the um, April 2022 high NASDAQ. Just did a double top here and uh, at about 15,292. If you look at the equal weight, a slight uh, lower high here in the equal weight, nothing of any real significance. So I don't, you know, again, I don't really see specifically in the NASDAQ and growth um, that we're seeing any sort of massive divergence. And again, maybe cap weighted over in the S&P is catching up the equal weight, okay? But then people are gonna come back and say, well, we're only being led by large cap growth. And that's the reason to not believe this rally. Let's examine that. So here is a 10 year return, okay, of the iShares growth value 
um, focused ETFs tracking large cap, medium cap, and small cap. Let's look at the 10 year return of these. So, okay, up top here, 10 year return, iShares Russell Top 200 Growth Index has returned 312% in the last 10 years. Mid cap growth, 168%. Call it roughly half mid cap growth. Top, here's the top, here's small cap growth, 2000. Russell 2000 growth, 116%. Let's call it roughly a third. Then you get down to mid cap value, top 200 value, and small cap value. So I think you know where I'm going with this when people say large cap growth is leading this rally, don't believe it. Dude, it's been that way for 10 years. Large cap growth is up 312%, while mid cap is only up, mid cap growth is up 168, small cap's up 116. Look at the values. Mid cap value up 88%, top 200 value 87%, small cap value 65%. Let's go back to the last five years. It's gonna be the same thing. Top 200 growth, 97%. Mid cap growth, 45%. Top 200 value stocks up 31%. And mid cap value, small cap growth, small cap value. So guys, it's almost always that way. Large cap growth stocks leading the stock market. We're going, we're in the next technological digital revolution. It's first one was back in late 90s into 2000. Here we are in version 2.0. Okay, so if we are comfortable with large cap growth leading let's take a look at the rotations okay and i love looking at the relative rotation graph here we're benchmarking against the s p and here is the month over month so what that means is each one of these dots is one month of trading and as you move um, it, as you exist on the right half of the screen. So if you're in the green and yellow hemisphere, you're outperforming the benchmark. If you're in the left half, you're underperforming the benchmark. The benchmark is the intersection of the XY axis, which is the S&P. Well, you can see the top 200 value has gone into a position of leadership as of July of 22. And the more you're moving up and to the right, the more outperformance you're seeing relative to the S&P 500. Well, it's been outperforming since July 22, and just recently has value started to move down, rotate out, and what's starting to make the hook? Top 200 growth, which really started to get a lot of steam here uh, in the first couple months of 2023, and just recently have we made that sharp hook to the north northeast, which that's picking up momentum on the vertical axis and relative strength on the horizontal axis to your benchmark. We haven't even rotated in to favor. We haven't even, large cap growth hasn't even overtaken value yet. So for, for people to say, don't believe it, the growth trade is overbought, let's go back and examine that. Let's see if it's truly overbought. One, it's not even in a position uh, that it's overtaken the value on the monthly relative rotation. Number one. Number two, let's go back and see times when growth did overtake value. When did it happen and how long did it last? Okay, so we're going back here. This is when oh, growth was our performing value. This was back in uh, 22. And you can, you can follow the years up here too. So we're continuing to go back. Okay, whoops. Growth still to the right of values. That means growth outperforming value back in 19. So when was the last time we saw growth to the left of value? We saw it right here, okay? So this was February 2017, which is six, six years and three or four months ago, okay? Growth was further to the left than value, all right? So that was 17 when we started to see Trump tariffs coming in, Fed started raising rates. We, so we started to see um, a little bit of hesitation, but then the market started to take off heading into COVID, okay? So what happened here? Well, uh, May of 17, and then right here, the two switch, June of 17. How about that? Six years ago. So now growth is starting to move further to the right into favor as value's coming out. So that was, let's call it June of 17, June of 17, and all of this time as we're heading into the NASDAQ rally going into COVID, uh, then we sell off as rates started going up, and then we hit COVID right here, 
and you can still see that growth is still well to the right of value and only here did growth lose its outperformance relative to value. That was May of 22. We went in in June of 17. We came out in May of 22. It's a long time. Let's go back and go even prior to that switch that happened back in 17, which was right here. So let's keep going back right here. Growth is outperforming value. When was the last time they switched? Right here. Okay. So right about here in February of 13, growth fell out of favor as value is coming in. All of a sudden growth starts to rotate up as value is coming out. And now when are they gonna switch? Right about there. That's gonna be March of 14. Growth is overtaking value, growth rotating in, value rotating out. How long does it last? March of 14. Oh, we're going. Is it, yep. Uh, they switch right about there. March of 14 to January of 17. So almost three years of outperformance. So my point is, and these are just the most recent two examples. When people say growth is overdone, it hasn't even started yet. We have precedent of a couple years to five or six years. If we get the rotation on the monthly, there's really no precedent over the last 10 years that it's going to be over and done. Now, it's no guarantee. We could flip and we could be rejected and growth could fall out. Value could rotate back in. There's no guarantee it's going to make that full orbital. But usually there's a there's a pretty good statistical chance that that's going to happen. So I kind of laugh when people say it's only being led by a, f a few growth stocks. Well, <laughs> dude. <laughs> That's been the case uh, for a long, long time, number one. And number two, if we are truly being led by growth stocks, we're just getting started. Uh, okay, so let's take a look at the LOA position and the NASDAQ and then we'll shut it down. Okay, so this is the NDX 100. You know I love the Gory Elliott Wave, Fibonacci, super fun. Um, so <clears throat> taking the labels off, what do we know? Uh, we are at the 786 retracement of the 2021 high down to the 2022 low. 786 retracement is what we call the retracement of last resort. If you don't hold this as resistance, more than likely you're going up to the 1272 extension, which means new all time highs. Okay. So we did back off from that a little bit. All right. We also are failing so far at the March uh, 2022. So we have a really key <coughs> confluence of resistance from an old high as well as a FIB retracement, which again is a retracement of last resort. Uh, looking at the wave count, uh, the way we look at it is I have minor one, minor corrective two. Uh, we broke through the 100% projection of 3v1 which is your minimum target for wave three broke that uh and the 1.618 which is more typical for a wave three 161 percent the distance traveled compared to one off of the wave two lows is all the way up here so are we going to get up there in wave three possibly however we might now be heading into a wave four correction and not going to test that 1618 yet we might be heading into a summer correction into wave four that could take us into the first uh maybe actually it's going to be the second third week of july or maybe even into august what comes along in the second week of july earning season comes up starting around the 12th to 13th q2 earnings we're going to have um the next CPI, we're going to have a PCE reading, uh, and we're then going to be looking at the Fed uh, on July 26th. So are we going to go into consolidation here in minor degree way four, heading into those very, very key events? It's possible. Now, the guideline of alternation says wave two was very sharp into the point. Wave four could be sideways, meandering a lot of, a lot of sideways nonsense. So on our stock swing desk, which we're carrying roughly 22, 23 positions in our stock portfolio, we're gonna be looking at selling calls upside above resistance to taking some premium. We might be doing some butterfly hedges in wave four, see if we can collect a little theta. We'll see if we can play this wave four. Uh, and then, you know, again, there's no guarantee it starts right away, but we're gonna be looking for signs that that is the is the case. Okay, guys, hope that helps. No, I'm throwing a lot at you there. Uh, comment below, let me know what you think. Is the growth trade setting up to fail? 
Uh, are people just not involved in this bull market and they're still going to have to buy later and push the market higher? Let me know what your thoughts are. Thanks again for watching, guys, and we'll see you on the next video. Our real portfolios in real time. Thanks again for watching. Hi, it's Todd from tradinganalysis.com. Thanks so much for watching. Listen, my team and I have uh, so much to share with you in terms of our technical analysis or fundamental analysis, uh, portfolio management tactics, trading in and out, maybe options, sector rotation. Let us know what's most interesting to you. Uh, maybe uh, drop that in the comments section and we'll do our best to work it in. Also, uh, consider clicking the subscribe button and the bell icon to be notified when we put out new videos. And finally, you can check us out at tradinganalysis.com if you'd like to see us manage our real portfolios in real time. Thanks again for watching.